Hello, beautiful souls. I'm Lisa Stroda. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Holistic Life Coach Podcast, where you'll get some motivation, inspiration, and value from movers, shakers, world changers, and unabashed dreamers. If you'd like to share your story, contact me through the show's website, theholisticlifecoachpodcast.com, and we'll see if you're a good fit. This week, I chat with Julie Darling of Darling Creative. Among the best PR advice she gives in this interview is how to promote your business on a small budget. Now, on to this week's episode. Today, I sit down and chat with Julie Darling, who has been in the luxury PR business for over 20 years. She is an authority on public relations, event planning, marketing strategy, and social media. In 2011, she was named one of Chicago Magazine's 50 Most Beautiful Chicagoans. She began her career as a television and commercial print model. She co-starred on the Style Network reality show, Chicago Licious. She is an entrepreneur and the owner of Darling Creative. Welcome, Julie. (laughs) Thank you so much for that amazing introduction, Lisa. (laughs) Um, You know, being on uh, this side of it is, um, it's really an honor uh, and an opportunity that I would normally get from my clients, but now we're in the days of podcast and Facebook Live and Back in the day, 20 years ago, uh, it's not how it worked, right? So I'm excited to talk to you mm-hmm. about um, all things marketing and entrepreneurial. And um, so let me know where you want to get started. You want to get started with some family background? Yeah, because you and I hail from that, the same neighborhood and parish in Chicago. And so we've known each other for a long time. And uh, yeah, tell us a little bit about your background. I know. Well, I love how our paths are crossing again. Uh, Mm -hmm. Again, thanks to Facebook and social media, right? Uh, Yeah. Being a kid on the northwest side of Chicago, uh, we were a very Midwestern town, you know, so to speak, very Midwestern roots and values. And um, Mm -hmm. I've kept those values throughout my life, even though I'm not uh, incredibly Uh, religious in the Catholic sense. I'm still very spiritual and I follow all those tenets that we, you know, learned as, as kids. And it really has benefited me. I think without getting political, I wish that we could Mm -hmm. just all come together um, and follow some basic tenets, right? I think those have um, really helped me succeed in uh, my career. Um, And it was really my father that pounded those into my brother and I, um, you know, mm-hmm. into our heads. Um, he was in public relations for Commonwealth Edison, uh, the electric company for his entire career. And he always envied my brother and I for, well, envy in the, in the jesting sense that we went mm-hmm. on to be very entrepreneurial. So, um, those were some of the basic roots of where I came from. And I think that it's important for people to really look back, see where they came from and figure out where they need to go to move forward Mm -hmm. without dwelling in the past. I think that you take, you take the learning and you take the things that you need to learn and you push yourself forward. You take the learning and you take yeah, and the you had that got you that example from your dad. You forward. saw him how he worked, how he networked, and uh, you had that great example in your childhood. And so, um, you know, if you can tell us a little bit about like how marketing changed over the last twenty years. Well, I and think you- with the age of social media, um, it has done some amazing things and it has done some incredibly harmful and and hurtful things. But Mm -hmm. um, just going back to my dad for a second, my, Mm -hmm. I remember, and this is going to be the tie in. I remember going to my very first networking event with him 
And it was Jane Byrne, who was the mayor at the time. And I was 17 years old. And it was shaking hands and and kissing babies all over the room. There was only about 50 people there. And I quickly learned in one event what it was going to take and why my father was in the position that he was because he was able to uh, really hone in on each individual person. He never forgot a name. And Mm -hmm. the way that he did it was he, as soon as he walked away from the person, he made a note um, on the back of that person's business card, right? Mm -hmm. So fast forward to, to today in the age of social media, while again, it's it's this amazing instantaneous connection with complete strangers, you still have to take the time to make it work. You still mm-hmm. have to take the time to network. You still have to take the time to learn um, about the person and learn about their product and so on and so forth. So I think the biggest um, the biggest thing that has come out of social media is that in order to be successful, you have to remain authentic. Uh, I think that's so important that people lose sight of because people mm-hmm. can see through it. Right. So yeah. um, being in the West loop in downtown uh, Chicago, I, I manage a Facebook group called the real West loop. There's, there's four of us who moderate and admin the group. And it's really interesting to see right away. You can tell from people's postings, you know, what their agenda is. And a lot of mm-hmm. times we have to remove content that is just, I don't want to say um, lazy or, you know, any of that. It's not in a censorship kind of way where we're trying to censor our group, but we are trying to keep things quality and, you know, with, um, with intent. So while we, again, we don't censor, it's just very, very interesting to see how people, how they promote their businesses, what they post, how they post it. And the four of Mm -hmm. us are always offline and going, okay, well, maybe we should have that person fix the post so it simply makes sense. Or maybe we Uh should tell that realtor to take better pictures because that post isn't getting any engagement. So when Mm -hmm. I say we moderate the group, we really do spend a lot of time trying to make the group, um, you know, authentic for people, you know, and it's just really interesting to see still how many people don't take the time. So um, even with clients, I have a a a chef friend, uh, he used to work for me and he's starting up his own private chefing business. And Mm -hmm. his partner, his friend, his buddy that he's partnered up with just doesn't get really how you have to engage and how you have to still work really hard and answer every single comment and respond. And they're having a hard time promoting a Valentine's Day event. And I just had to be brutal and blunt Mm -hmm. and say, "But, but guys, like... Yeah, I asked you to do a simple thing and neither one of you have done it. So like, you can't expect to be all booked up yet. Like, <laughs> like I'm not sure. What are we going to do there? There's a simple, there's, you know, there's some simple um, uh, solutions. And the biggest one is engagement and, and remaining authentic. So yeah, I think yeah, you- if, if that's the one thing, it's you still have to, like you would be in person, you know. And don't forget, take notes, keep a log, you know, especially if you're using social media for networking purposes. Yeah, you brought up that occasion that you uh, went to with your father and saw him working. And, you know, it reminds me of a scene in Devil's Wear Prada, right? I think, was it? Yeah. The movie (laughs) with um, with Meryl Streep and Anne Hathaway. (laughs) And that scene where where she is uh, put in that position because the other assistant who usually goes with uh, Meryl Streep's character to to those parties and uh, here you have to know who all these people are and then just whisper in her ear, whispers the name and, and, you know, about the kids and about uh, what's going on in that person's life and how 
important it is, just those personal touches. And uh, I think that scene, if anyone's familiar with that, um, is, you know, just explains what Julie was talking about. I mean, it's, and, <laughs> and, uh, uh, and how so important true. it is. And how important it is. Meryl Streep uh, is my spirit animal. <laughs> She's my spirit animal from, actually, I've, I've relaxed a lot in my, you know, older, wiser years, so to speak. But uh, when I was first really up and running with my company, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I made a few enemies of my interns and, and my assistants, but 10 years later, they're all thanking me. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> I feel like I did something right. It might not have been, you know, the easiest, but I really did demand the best and I demanded perfection. And I think that's what's allowed me to pivot um, in my career. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, that scene is a real scene. We used to have books on all the VIPs that came to our events so that we could make proper introductions and the interns had to, to, I mean, that scene is quite literally mm -hmm. st straight out of a PR playbook. So yeah. Wow. Uh huh. It's true. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. um, funny, you that know was what? a good it's... one. That's an excellent example. Actually. <laughs> and I know like. I, you know, I think this answers my next question for you is what can you do for a client as opposed to someone, you know, doing it themselves and promoting themselves on uh, social media? Um, you talked about that networking and that connecting and with all your years in this industry, someone who's trying to do it themselves isn't going to have all that, what that wealth of knowledge that you have and those, uh, connections. I mean, can you talk, I mean, we've talked a little bit about being personable with clients and potential clients. Um, can you talk a little bit about how do you make the, how do you network really well? How do you uh, connect with someone? From the perspective of how can I help my clients then in turn network? Because I think the, the long and short of the answer is, as a publicist, okay. you really become the extension of the, brand, of the person's brand. So mm -hmm. you almost become part of the team, right? So you're working on okay. their behalf, but as you're representing the client, you have to become their brand. So it's important that you believe in the brand that you're representing. And what people mm -hmm. don't realize is, is that they've already built a personal brand that they might not even be aware of. So it's important to have somebody else, even if it's friends and relatives, take a good hard look at your social media and give feedback as to how you're coming across. So okay. th in this day and age, because we're all online, right? Everything's mm -hmm. online. Everything you post is representative of your brand. Uh, you have to be you really have to take a good, cold, hard look at how you're coming across. So um, if you're like that angry person mm -hmm. that's always posting angry political stuff, you might want to steer clear of that if you're opening a daycare, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Like, and right. just start cleaning up your social media. Like, I know that's an extreme example, but my point being is, mm -hmm. right, you, you want to make sure that you're appealing to your audience, so you have to take a good hard look. And then as far as reaching out and networking, I always, one good way to do it with um, LinkedIn is like I have a call set up tomorrow with a friend and um, to, to bounce business back and forth, right? And mm -hmm. he's like, I asked him, who is your ideal, who is your ideal introduction? And he mm -hmm. said, well, I'll put a Google Street together and I know who my ideal introduction is he said well just go through my LinkedIn and see who really looks interesting to you and I'll make the introduction and so mm -hmm. the 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 concept then is hopefully those handful of introductions just open up more introductions because it really only takes one to get a really strong mm -hmm. spider web going right like okay. the idea of branching out your network and I think it's important to really stick to who your who your person is if, is that person mm -hmm. um, the successful 
millennial? It's is it the you know middle aged single mom? Is it you know and go on going and, and go, the, the the successful um, male entrepreneur? You know what is his social status, et cetera. So you, you really have to stick to your tribe, your niche, and your okay. people, and that's okay. how yeah, and your niche, yeah. Yeah. And your niche too, okay. obviously. I mean, it's you don't want to waste your time, but I think the biggest important thing is really sticking with people that are are your you're going to be productive with, you're going to feel comfortable mm-hmm. with, you're going to speak the same language with. Um, okay. So if someone's just starting a business and an entrepreneur wants to market themselves and they don't have a large budget, mm-hmm. what? Do you have any advice for that? Mm-hmm. I think the biggest one, uh-huh, I think the first one is to uh, announce to your friends and family. It can be mm-hmm. an email blast and it's got to be simple and sweet. So if it is a personal training business, for example, why is it, why is it special and unique and give the people three talking points uh, to help spread the word. So your talking points are 20 year certified coach, um, specializes in diabetes and has, um, has trained the top people in the city from Ken Griffith to whomever, right? So you want your three talking points that you, that your friends and family can help spread the word. When I say friends and family, you know, again, your people. I'm not talking about blasting or spamming your Facebook page. I'm talking Mm -hmm. about your friends and family that are going to be, you know, on your team. I think after that, the next thing to do is utilize social media, have some nice, Mm -hmm. clean imagery on um, Instagram and Facebook. Again, depending on your target market, it could be Snapchat. Uh, but mm-hmm. you have to, again, determine what you're, who you're going after. Um, and then from there, create a Facebook group. And the reason I say okay. a Facebook group, and yes, there's lots of other platforms coming out right now, but right now your Facebook is still the largest one. So when I say Facebook group, find mm-hmm. some fun name for it, whatever it happens to be. Um, in the diabetes example, um, there it's actually a real example. My friend uh, is helping people reverse their diabetic condition. So it's mm-hmm. calling reversing type two diabetes for nerds. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and there's like, you know, there's a lot of diabetes groups on Facebook, but it's mm-hmm. cute, right? Like, okay, we're going to get nerdy about this and we're really going to get to the root issue. And he's finding incredible success. He's helped one, um, help one uh, woman lose 135 pounds. So, you know, with those success stories that get posted in the group, people mm-hmm. see that. Yeah. And again, when you invite people into the group, make sure you're inviting the right people. Take the time uh-huh. to engage with them and say, hey, I'm starting up this group. Would you be interested? And to tell you the truth, the, I'm in the group. The only reason I'm in the group is because uh, I was going to start training with Christopher. Thankfully, I don't have to worry about diabetes, but I have a sluggish thyroid, which he's able to help me with. Yeah. So because of that, I've invited a couple of people to the group and the group is growing and they're getting more customers or they're getting more you know, training clients. So mm-hmm. that's really the way you have to do it. It takes time, but it works because again, it's, um, it's word of mouth and it's authentic. Once you get big enough, you can start doing sponsored Facebook ads and Instagram ads and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But you want to start with a good solid base. I want to talk a little bit about why you wanted to become an entrepreneur as opposed to, I guess, if you work for a a big firm. That story is just wonderful about your father and how you saw him uh, work that party. And so why Funny. did you want to go out on your own? I, you want the honest answer or the, or the, the pretend one? Whichever you are comfortable <laughs> giving me. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I think the real answer is I have a problem with authority. <laughs> I, um, I think, you know, there's t- a 
there's a few types of people in the world. There's a type of person that can go in and punch in and punch out. And then there isn't. And mm -hmm. I'm in the other category. I, I have a really hard time working so hard for somebody else and not receiving the benefit, mm -hmm. not receiving the benefit, you know, and whatever those benefits mm -hmm. are for you, for some, it's, you know, some, for some it's rewards for some, it's, uh, you know, just your bosses, um, your bot, your bosses, acceptance of you you know it I mean for me honestly it just and I always felt like I had not necessarily a better way to do things but I always felt like I had an easier way to get things done and, and quicker and I'm, I'm very resourceful uh, again I get that from my father and so I think it just became very difficult for me knowing that I was making somebody else money and I wasn't going to reap the reward um, and of course, I watched my, my father and my grandfather go through having positions that, while they were great for them, opened a bunch of doors, they were unhappy. So for me, it was mm. more about independence and scheduling and, you know, running around as, as I, I saw fit and, and so forth. But um, I think it was, it really just came down to, I had a problem with authority. <laughs> so I found a way to work around it. Miranda, yeah, yeah, and and to and to, and to tell you the truth, uh, modeling was had a big part of that because I had to market myself to a large degree. Modeling, right? I had to mm -hmm. um, have my own look and my own brand and my own, so to speak, like you know. So I was never labeled as the fashion girl, and I was never labeled as the commercial girl. I kind of fell somewhere in the middle. And mm -hmm. I quickly realized that modeling was not going to be all fun and games like people think it is. So I got to work behind the scenes. And that's how I really got into event marketing and public relations, because, um, again, it was all the hard work. And then there was, you know, a, no real reward. Um, and you know, if you will, the economies of scale weren't there. Mm -hmm. So I started producing my own events and then I would hire 10 other models. So I got paid more, right? So uh -huh. um, that's really what came, what it came down to was finding a little bit, a better way for myself and in turn my family, you know? So mm -hmm. I wanted to work mm -hmm. smarter, not harder. Yeah. And that's a fascinating journey, how that all, just one string, just one idea went into another and, mm -hmm. and one influence into it. And, um, and that's, and that's what, this is all about this podcast. It's always fascinated me how people find their, yeah. find their road and uh, what takes them from one thing to another. Like you said, connections that one person can open up that spider web. And um, sometimes you, you, you don't think it's something happens and it, how it's going to work out. And, and then you look back and go, Oh, that's why that happened. Okay. I, that's how I got that idea. And, that's, that's always fascinated me. So how do you keep motivated as an entrepreneur? Um, I always keep an eye for opportunity. And it's funny that you just asked that question because I was, I was going to add on, I always look for opportunity, but more importantly, I, I put out into the universe what I'm looking for. And mm -hmm people have this misconception of, um, of, of that concept. And a long time ago, as corny as it might sound to some of the listeners, I, I read The Secret and I tried to implement some of those mm -hmm. um, thought processes. And I will tell you that they work. So here's a simple example. When it's a snowstorm like it is in Chicago today and you need to get somewhere and you're looking for a parking spot and you're running late, you really just have to say, nope, it's going to be okay. I, I, I'm going to get there. You don't know mm -hmm. how you're going to get there, but you're going to get there. And then all of a sudden a parking spot appears, right? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I know, simple example, but it really is true. And I, I think it's important to just keep the faith and keep moving forward because you don't know when the, un the next opportunity or client is going to come along. And no one says you have to accept every opportunity or every opportunity. You don't have to say yes to everything. But the more that you put out there, the more that's going to come back. 
and then you'll be able to make the decision on, on what's best for you. And that's how I've always lived my life, sometimes to my detriment with bad business decisions, like a bad business partner at one point, or, um, you know, a, a project that didn't really work out the way that I saw it. But somehow, some way, it always mm -hmm. opened another door because I, I kept the faith. So, um, and that faith could be whatever it means to you, right? Not even right. in the religious right. sense. And I just want to make yeah. sure that's super clear too, because it, it's mm -hmm. it's not meant to be some magical, mystical unicorn as much as it's meant to be, you know, really striving for your end goal and just keep mm -hmm. working towards that goal and stay positive. Because if you stay yeah. negative, nothing's going to happen. You'll end up in an argument with your client or something will be frustrating or, you know, <laughs> you know, who knows what, right? So. Right. Exactly. Can you talk about, I, you had mentioned um, when we began talking about the pivoting and how you pivoted mm -hmm. in your, um, in your career. And if you could talk about a little bit about that and uh, when. Yeah, I think, I think pivoting. with, yeah, I think with the pivot, it's uh, especially with COVID, right? Who knew we'd be in a worldwide pandemic? Um, the important thing is to always, is you have to act quickly. So when an app opportunity does come about, you have to quickly turn and literally do a 180. You have to pivot and you can't let fear hold you back. I mean, we have several examples um, how a lot of companies have pivoted throughout the pandemic, how um, restaurants have, you know, recreated themselves to a large degree to accommodate um, their customers and just keep their doors open. Good friends mm -hmm. of um, mine opened a restaurant uh, close to my house, uh, which is convenient. <laughs> they got a lot of my business. Um, what they did was um, at the be very beginning, they were opening during COVID. They opened their restaurant at the end of March last year. And it was just, I mean, heartbreaking, this beautiful, beautiful place and they can't put people in it. So what they did was they created a facade at the front of the restaurant. They had, um, they have two large open door, you know, the doors that they can open. So what they did was they put uh, like a, you know, like a, ta uh, we'll call it a, a banquet table um, set a little bit higher. So they made it like a walk-up window, um, but okay. they did it right right? They did it right. It was fun. They had a mayor, they had a, um, <laughs> they had a, a stand up cut out of the mayor with her, you know, with her, um, <laughs> with her binder, like everybody's oh, yeah, seen that yeah. meme, right? So it's just, yeah. you know, it's five foot tall so cut out of mayor <laughs> Lightfoot standing there with, you know, this grumpy look on her face. And then the mm -hmm. chef, he's known as the angry chef. So he had a big caricature, caricature, of his face, the angry chef. And then he had, um, he had, uh, caramel corn and he had, um, cotton candy. And it was just a fun little walk up window to very mm -hmm. much look carnival -y, but you could walk up and you could get, um, like, you know, a, a, a bottle of beer. He would put it in a paper bag. He would put, which mm -hmm. is legal by the way, and he would write yeah. fun little notes on the paper bag. So like a brown bag lunch with little notes like your mom did when you were in school. So the point Cute. is, is they quickly, immediately pivoted and just got creative and their food is excellent. So people were like, oh, let's go, let's go to Black Barrel and, you know, take, take the dogs for a walk and pick up some fun stuff. And oh, they always have biscuits and water out for the dogs. <laughs> I'm a big dog person. The West Loop is a big dog area. So it's just one example of many, but you have to quickly learn how to pivot and um, reinvent yourself. And it just really all depends on what your individual, you know, what your individual business is. But I love mm -hmm. his example because as soon as the, as soon as they were going to open, they were close after spending mm -hmm how many hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, building out a restaurant, right? I mean, devastating. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. but they're doing great. They're doing great. Awesome. They have some That's of the best wonderful. Ribs, you know, so like they have some mm -hmm. of the best ribs and the best burger and Chicago magazine just named them best burger and 
um, because of that, and here's the tie in, mm-hmm. they posted on social media, Facebook, so on and so forth, all over their mm-hmm. best burger award. And one day, uh, Sean and I were sitting and having lunch, and these uh-huh. two biker dudes pull up. And when I say biker dudes, I'm I mean, you know, biker dudes, patches all over <laughs> their leather, um, the two big Harleys, you know, stickers mm-hmm. all over their bags on their Harleys. And they come walking up and they grab a table. I will be damned if they didn't travel 350 miles from Ohio to get the best burger in Chicago. Wow. So, That's you know, amazing. I mean, <laughs> right. So I love yeah. that story because it's like these two guys that you would never have thought like, you know, what's like, what's up? I mean, they totally looked out of place. Right. But they were amazing. There was so much fun. So, yeah. Yeah, that's the power of social media and just working on your branding and perfecting your, you know, what your product is. Yeah, again, it a, be, one, yeah, it could be any product, right? So sorry, I didn't mean to yeah. just interrupt. No, 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 that's okay. That is a, that's not really an amazing success story to come out of this pandemic to, to be, you know, start be, begin your restaurant and then get, you know, this news that you can't have anyone in there and, and totally how they turned that around on a dime and, and did it. That is yeah. that's amazing. So how would you advise a young adult to, you know, if they're thinking of going into marketing, is there a, you know, what uh, type of schooling or what internships, uh, you know, things like that? Or- yeah. So I think it's still old school because you need the, the experience. <clears throat> mm-hmm. And you have to be willing to, you know, as a young student, you have to be willing to put yourself out there Um, or as a young person in, you know, just starting out. Um, And as much as I hate to say it, even if you have to work for free and you don't get Mm -hmm. college credit, figure out how to do it, figure out how to volunteer your time, figure out how to donate your time and just learn Um, because I promise you it's going to open up the doors. If you can get a job and you need a job, all the better. But if if I were a young person in this day and age, I would be figuring out how to reach the CEO of every company that I wanted to work for and say, mm-hmm. can I work in your marketing department? I can give you 15 hours, no cost to you. And then you can maybe joke and say, but you have to buy the coffee. And, <laughs> you know, I will put my heart and soul into it. You know, I will put my heart and soul into it. And I think that goes a lot farther than just sending in your resume or expecting and, and feeling entitled that you need a, you know, a paying position for that because the experience is priceless. Um, mm-hmm. But more importantly, what it does is if you like that company and they like you, chances are you'll have a job waiting for you. And that's the most important thing because coming out of college, coming out of schooling, it's going to be hard to network and just get a job offer, right? So mm-hmm. like be smart about it and do it for more than one company. You know, find a couple of places yeah. you want to work. If it's mm-hmm. you're into baking, find somebody that you can apprentice with and just say, I'll be there every day at 5.30 in the morning and I'll be making the bread. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> like you you have yeah. to really put in the time to to continue to push um, to continue to push forward. So I think that's really still, it's old school. It's a way to do it. And you can yeah. certainly get creative with your resume. I mean, there's lots of tools out there to do it and how to reach people and so on and so forth. But um, I mean, just short of sending a singing telegram, although that might be appropriate, right? Like mm-hmm. if it's a tele, if it's some sort of communications company that is known for PR stunts, I would probably mm-hmm. figure out how to do something that's up, up their alley, right? Like, mm-hmm. and yeah. that would, that would resonate with them. Like get creative. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That personal touch and being creative. That's what I'm hearing. So Julie, where can people find you? You know, where can oh, they well, find you know out what? more about um, you? Super easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Super easy. Just give me a call. <laughs> <laughs> Just Google me. Give me a call. Um, my email address is uh, my 
yeah, like I was just going to say, like, as on that personal branding thing, my, my website is my name. So mm-hmm. I s- highly recommend that everybody buys their own website name. Uh-huh. Um, because you never know if you're going to need it, yeah. but at least you own mm-hmm. it because there's no intellectual property rights over mm-hmm. just, an, you know, a name. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I can give it to yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, all, <laughs> Sorry. All, I know. I'm going back. It's uh, it's okay. It's um all of your uh, contact information will be in the show notes, so listeners can find you. We'll be able to find you all your information in the show notes, so they okay. can um look that they'll be able to look that up, and um it'll be there for them. But thank you so much for joining us. Oh, this was fun. I hope. Uh... I could talk to you. I just looked at the time. This is great. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah. But anybody who wants to reach out, please do. I'm always happy to talk marketing and personal branding. Wonderful. Thank you. If you're hearing this message, you've listened to our new episode all the way through. And for that, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. You can find Julie's contact information in the show notes at the holistic life coach podcast.com. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, please share it with others, post about it on social media, or leave a rating and review at Apple Podcasts or Spotify and subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. To catch all the latest from me, you can follow me on Instagram at the Holistic Life Coach Podcast and at the Holistic Life Coach Podcast page on Facebook. Thanks again. Until next time, beautiful souls.